had this stroke in my junior year of high school, he died. The medical personnel couldn't find him. They brought him back, but he was in a medically induced coma. And that's why I like to come here because when he was in that coma, he was just a short mile from here. I don't want to be that brother who's standing on a stage saying that my brother's dead. I want to be able to have a good story, I guess. I want to be the guy who says, you can make it out. Tomorrow is his two year anniversary for sobriety. July 17th, 2014. How would you describe yourself? I make a terrible first impression usually. I can't recall a single person that met me for the first time and actually liked me. <laughs> Average, I guess, but um, I'm determined. I'm energetic, I'm outgoing, I'm charismatic. I take a little bit of getting used to. How would you describe your brother? Um, there's two different versions of him. There's when he's using and when he's not using. And when he's not using, he's caring, he's energetic, he's prideful. But when he's using, he's deceitful. He's a liar. He's, he'll give up anyone or anything. Josh shelters himself with his ego a little bit. I'd say he's more afraid of the past repeating itself and his life or his kids' lives in the future than anything. When was the first time that you did drugs? Uh, smoking pot, probably 13. Oxycodone, 14. Cocaine, 15. Mm, mushrooms, acid. Heroin, crystal meth, crack, 18. Basically, we were like a middle class average family, and we come from white suburbia. We grew up in a divorced household, split up household. And when I was in fourth grade, that's when I realized that he was using drugs, but I didn't think anything of it because we had always been around like heavy drinkers our whole lives. My mother's a binge drinker, full blown alcoholic, and to this day doesn't realize it. I'm a functioning alcoholic. If that's what you want to say. You're a functioning alcoholic. Yeah, I'm a functioning alcoholic. People can say that. I mean, I don't really think I'm an alcoholic. But if you want to say, I, I can say I'm a functioning alcoholic. It got to the point in high school where I just said no more. And I haven't talked to her since two years ago, almost. Josh changed since all this went down with um, RJ. He became lecturing everybody opinionated about everybody. But look, and he was scared. It was his brother. And I don't blame him. My brother went from a 200 pound, like overweight, but still healthy kid to about like 140 pounds with green skin. You can see his bones. I was too smart for my own good. I thought I could outthink anything. And I couldn't even get out of my own way. Heroin really got him even worse when he went to school. I was popping a needle in my arm probably 12 to 20 times a day. I would go to class completely banged up, still managed to pass somehow, and then I would go home and just smash drugs. I got more than three quarters of the way done, and then just life was too much. A buddy of mine killed himself. I gave him the last bag of heroin he ever did in his life. And it killed him. Heroin is the best feeling on earth. 
way with someone. It holds you, it embraces you, it lives in you. It consumes you. In all, he's overdosed 13 times and died six. And after that stroke that left half of his body basically unable to be used, he continued to use, and he died another time. And then eventually, when he got kicked out, he got a job and he moved into like government housing and he got his act together. A lot of people didn't have faith in him, and I did. Why did you have faith in him? Because I know that he's a better person than that. You just kind of know that some people don't want to change, and I knew that he did. Why was that the last time? Why in that moment did you get sober? I don't like quitting it, but I gave up completely. Hard time. One deep breath and realized that I could not fight this thing anymore. It's not a fight to stop, it's a fight to keep doing it. So then why is it not easy to get sober? Because people don't like giving up. Your brain is wired to think that that's the most important thing in your life. You give everything you have and more to keep it. All you have to do is just realize you can't. That is really hard. How have you changed since what happened with your brother? I've become stronger. I found dedication and motivation. Before I was like a C and B student in high school, I realized that I could actually do something impactful, and that motivated me to do better and be better. I go to high schools and I talk to as many kids as I can, usually in health classes. I just tell them basically why they shouldn't do drugs and the fact that if they are, they can get help. And even people who aren't addicted, but they have family members who are addicted can get help too. And I let them know that the whole purpose is that if I can change one of their lives, I can change a million. What are your expectations for me? Like what's, what's, the, what's the measuring stick like back in the day and what's the measuring stick now and what's... It never changes. I think there's a lot of change between where I was. Yeah, but you're just being happy is the measuring stick. But what makes you happy? What makes me happy? Her. Like, just life in general at this point. I'm not sure my brain chemically can get happy anymore. Amen. But, I mean, what gives me peace? Pretty much knowing that I'm not up every day. And how do you know you're not up every day? I mean, in general, not just in the sense of like drugs, in the sense of like, how do you know you're doing the right thing? How? How do you know you're in the right place? You know what I mean? Not making people miserable. What's your footprint? What's your goal? What What is? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to leave behind? One significant point that where I touch the world is different.